What's up, Ogre and Gavin? Hello. Yeah, so if you guys want to weigh in, go ahead. Yeah, if you have any contentions, go ahead. I'd like to hear it. Well, I believe the phrase I'm supposed to say is there was no flood, right? Is that the correct wording? <laughs> yeah, that's the usual uh, what we hear, yeah. All right, fantastic. Yeah, I mean, yeah, you know, as I'm sure you're aware, I got plenty of issues with the flood. I'm I'm in here arguing it, you know, twice a week, it seems, nowadays. Um, I don't know what method you want to go by. I, as you know, I mainly focus on geology, so that's why I like to talk about, but I can try my hand at whatever, really. Although I'm not going to back Richard's, uh, or he who should not be named argument. I don't know that one, so. So, Ogre, uh, I guess I will, well, I was going to ask is, so what, what is your opinion? And you already told me, you, you don't think there was like a global flood. Right. I think what you said is more likely that a bunch of cultures had a event happen to them and wrote down a story that you would write about a flood. Like having a boat isn't a weird thing if you want to have a story that a flood survived. Yeah, and also eight people too, which is, I mean, that's a very specific number. I don't think, I mean, why would all cultures say, oh, let's just agree upon all eight people? And it just happens to be the biblical number. Well, um, so I, I think that's very unique too. Well, I know uh, Redefined Living posted a ICR article about comparing flood um, accounts. Mm -hmm. And in that article, he cites the eight people for example is not one of the things that's super common favorite family is in the article but that exact number isn't necessarily common because there's lots of one person or a city of people you know there's a, a wide variety if you look at each individual story you know yeah um i did some research on that it's more common than you think i'm going to show actually a uh, a graph of how many cultures use use eight people? It's gonna be one second. Uh, the Greeks had two. Japan didn't have a story of a global flood. <sighs> I did a video on this like seven years ago on my old channel, so my flood myth uh, memory is rather lacking. I'm not gonna be able to name a lot of individual stuff, sadly. Yeah, well, China, Mesopotamia. Um, off the top of my head, do have eight people, and so and so and many other cultures do too. Uh, I'm just gonna try to pull. It. Give me one second. So oh, I guess a phrase, a phrase I would throw back at you is, um, are you saying that if any culture has eight, that's an argument for Noah's flood, or is there like a plus minus going on here? You know. Like what? What? What do you deem to be well? A certain amount of cultures chose eight cool versus okay. This is starting to hint at something. Because if you know if oh if it's only right. four, that doesn't mean much, right? It, like right. No, I mean yeah. I, there's more out there. I just don't know all of them per se. But uh, well, yeah. If if you get into when you start finding so many similarities and the common things, you, you have to start wondering. Um, where, where, you, where, where does, the, where's the demarcation then of making it a myth and not a myth? And sure, yeah. So I'm saying like there's more that supports a non-myth than a myth. Um, so I guess I, I would stack them differently, right? Uh, exactly eight people. I think that's pretty interesting. If the, if all if a lot of them shared that, uh, something like it being a global flood to me is less interesting right. because an ancient culture passing down this flood that got bigger and bigger and wrote down as a global flood that I could see that happening versus eight people being very specific. So, right. 
Yeah, I mean, to me, it's not. It's I'm not too concerned about rather. What What does that even mean worldwide? Does that mean one part of the land? You know, I don't know. I'm just. I think yeah. just going off the assumption that it's ran as a worldwide flood is best for conversation. That's an entire different subject, right? That's more of a theology or history right. subject. So. Yeah, yeah. I'm just saying. I mean, it's well. It's also know, harder to prove for a global flood to be true. <clears throat> right again what does that mean the global scope the scope... Like, like the entire like the entire world being covered in water to the highest peak of the mountains okay yeah so the entire world should should have sediment layers like over a mile deep everywhere around the world with fossils in them right well that's not what we find yeah the well, world, has, not a, what we find. Well, well, the wait, world wait, has a wait. drastic wait, variety wait. Um, wait, 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 hold, 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 hold everything. You don't see sediment layers over a mile deep everywhere around the world with fossils in them? Oh, God, no. Is that, is that what you said? They're, they're, you, the world's geology is incredibly varied from location to location. Some places you have sediment, some places you have metamorphs, some places you have igneous, there's different types of sediments. The word sediment is... Almost meaningless you know, for the sake of conversation. What kind of do you sediment know are you the percentages? To? Do you know the percentages of igneous rock and sedimentary rock? Um, also, I mean, I guess I could try looking it up. Off the top of my head, it's predominantly sedimentary. Yeah, I think okay. shale is the most predominant uh, rock type on top of layers, but you have vast yeah, swaths of, is, say, what is igneous shale? What is or what shale? have you. What is shale? What is shale? Yeah. Shale is mudstone. Shale right. is the type Water. of rock you get at the bottom of a, so it's a sediment lake layer. or something like that. It's a sediment layer deposited by water, right? Just like the rest of the sediment layers. Well, but sandstone's also sediment layer, and that comes from a very That's different That's what environment. I said. That's what I said. Just like all the rest of the sediment layers, they're all water deposited. They're all over. Well, they're not all water, water deposited. You have lots of dune deposits and uh, aeolian no. wind no, deposits no, as well. In no, Japan. no, no, no. You can tell the difference between a water-deposited sediment layer and a, and a wind-blown desert. Well, yeah, layer. and you can and these sediments both exist throughout the world at various locations not, at various not amounts. Not comparable volumes. The the, by well, the far, vo how does the volume matter if you have any because, aeolian because you can't have because, it during a flood? Because the water-deposited sediment layers have to be the greater volume. Well, no, in your they, model, should everything be water-deposited? They are the greater volume. Well, it's not. Well, first of all, greater volume is a subjective term. Secondly, how would a flood do anything well, but it's, water? What I'm saying is minuscule. It's a, not minuscule in, it is minuscule compared to the water deposited sediment layers that are deposited by water everywhere around. Again, the there's different types of water deposits. Again, layers, you know limestones, the sandstones, and shales all have very different depositional environments. You know, this is nice that you have um, you have stories and records and, and records and, and accounts of the global flood or, or a flood or eight people or bad people or a boat and animals. You know, it's nice. And so, and then all of a sudden you look at the uh, geology and, hey, we did have a global flood. And it's all <laughs> well, there. The, the, Greek, the, Greek, the Greek myth so, is uh, two people survived. There. It's all there. Well, it's no his wife and his kids. Well, that's not eight. That's two. It doesn't matter. It doesn't it, it matter. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. It's people that survived a global flood. And, an and, animal, J J and Japan doesn't have birds, a global flood story. Release. But that's not, the, that's not the point. The point is you have all of these records and stories. And, and, then, and then you look at the evidence and, and, hey, we did have a global flood. And the evidence doesn't show a global flood. <laughs> Because you you don't even know what the volume is of the sediment layers that are water deposited around the world, do you? So so you, again, so you don't you don't know what I'm talking about when I say evidence of the oh, global flood, the geological you're talking evidence. About. You're not the, you're not the so first when person I'm talking about, about this, right? So when I'm talking about the geological evidence of the global flood, you don't even know what I'm talking about. So, because you don't know what the volume is, you don't go know what the please get a word in. You keep repeating. no, you don't know what the volume is, so you don't know well, what let, I'm talking let about. Let him let him try and say something. Jungle, hold on. I'm finished. He doesn't, the sentence have, he before doesn't you have anything him. to say. What's he going to say? Oh, give him a second to say it. 
<laughs> so your statement to me sounds like uh, all the world's the everyone drives a car. A statement like that, in so much that how are you defining car? Right, is a truck a car? What is everyone? It's a very broad, simple statement that tries to describe a great complexity. The almost the entirety of the Canadian Shield is exposed igneous rock. That's a big swath of land. Do I know the exact percentage of the exact types of sediments off the top of my head? No, of course not. It's about a quarter of a percent of the land area. A quarter of a percent of the land area is over the world. I mean, that's a rough estimate. That's a rough. So the Canadian Shield being mostly exposed igneous and or metamorphic rock is great, much greater than a quarter of a percent. The large igneous provinces in Russia, half of Siberia. You think that's a problem? Igneous rock. You think that's a problem? Well, a global flood with all the activity, geological activity going on. You think that's wait, a problem? Wait, let's slow down. Are we? Is we that you think that's a problem? Statement. Now you want to jump ship? You here. think the, the well, Rocky Mountains being jungle. pushed up so much that the igneous rock pokes through? You think that's a problem? Well, you have extrusive and intrusive igneous rock. Different grain sizes resulting from different rates of cooling, showing you if they're in- extrusive, intrusive. Intrusive has its own issues. And you extrusive think that's a has even greater issues. And you think that's a problem? Well, if you have a volcano erupting under a mountain like what we find, yeah, that's no. the thing I was looking for. No, right? I'm not talking about volcanoes. Then you have volcanoes things like, like a- pillow. <laughs> then you have pillow lavas, which are indicative of underwater extrusive volcanoes right but i'm not talking about i'm not even talking about anything comparable to the volume of a volcano a volcano is minuscule compared to the amount of sediment layers that are deposited around the world over mile deep everywhere on every continent again i have to point out those lots the, the, the called large igneous provinces like a third of siberia is all volcanic remains a third of siberia that's not nothing that's like the, almost the size of china and you think that's a problem? You keep jumping back and forth on me. Yes, that is a problem because this Why? rock was was this rock, rock was um it shows geologic activity. This rock was deposited not underwater. It is not deposited. You know it comes up. Igneous rock comes up from underneath. It's not deposited. Well, d- deposition is just the term you use in geology for rocks being laid down. To or, unless, it's a volcano, unless it's a volcano that spills out igneous rock. Yeah, exactly. So you have these but large... That's, that's, not a, that's not even what I'm talking about when I'm talking about the sediment layers from the global flood. That's minuscule. Uh, again, it, I have to disagree with you. I'm giving you examples. These sizes are not minuscule. I just told you and what the percentage that, and I just beyond told you that, what the, the interbedding. If you look at any, if you, I don't know what's, I don't know it's what more a than a quarter state of a or province you live in, but if you look at a geologic map of your area, it varies wildly in shapes and colors and uh, m- stuff like that of the different depositional environments that there are. You're Sandstone, ignoring shales, limestone, chalk, it granites, doesn't do what away. Igneous rock does not do away with the sediment layers on every continent over a mile deep everywhere around the world with fossils in it. It doesn't do away with the evidence of the global flood. You don't find... If I go outside right now, I'm not going to find a mile deep of sediment. If you go outside right now, you're not going to find a mile deep of sediment. How do you know? Well, <laughs> I know because I, I live here. <laughs> isn't, isn't the continental shelf of uh, the Atlantic Ocean, isn't that all mostly sediment layers? I'm sitting right on no. top of that. The, wait, the continental shelf of the Atlantic Ocean? You, yeah, you know that uh, shelf that goes out underneath the, the ocean? It goes extends for quite a ways into the Atlantic Ocean from the United yeah, States? Yeah, and then it drops in the abyssal plain, right? Yeah, and I'm sitting right on top of that. And that's all you're sedimentary not, rock layers. No, in New Jersey. Oh, New Jersey sits okay, on top I think of I know that. what you're saying now. Um, it's right on top of it. You think you think that Jersey is all all Jersey Shore with uh, sand? Is that what you think? It, that all the sand layers came from the Jersey Shore? <laughs> what? I don't even understand your question. <laughs> well, what do you what do you think? What do you think I'm talking about? I'm sitting right on top of the sediment layers deposited by the global flood. What do you want? So, and same thing with the pyramids of Egypt. Same. 
thing with the pyramids what all over the world. They're sitting on top of the sediment layers. Everywhere. They're sitting on top of the sediment layers. That's because the sediment layers are mm. almost everywhere. It's 70, over 75% of the land area, surface area. So I would... This seems to be going in circles, but I'll repeat my main issue with your sentence. Your issue with your sentence is one, you're using sediment as if it's sedimentary layer as if it's one thing, when it very much is not. There are it's like 20, six, 30 different types of sedimentary layers. It's six mega sequences or more. And two, did you're you know using what that is? You know what I just average, said? And it seems to me you're picturing that everything has a mile of sediment quote unquote did you understand what i just said about the mega sequences six, six, mega six, sequence. me yeah. six mega sequences of sedimentary layers deposited around the world and again if we at go least. outside and we look at our local geology we find a vast plethora of different types of interbreded layers ranging over, in thickness from feet to hundreds of feet over 75 percent of the land area is sedimentary rock over a mile deep everywhere so, around the world. First time you said with it was 0. 0.5, and now it's 75 percent. With the exception of what? With the exception of igneous rock that pokes up through the sedimentary layers. I'm chewing jelly beans right now, that's why I'm taking a bit to answer. Um, <laughs> I love jelly beans. I mean, you should you should expect that sale. there be igneous rock poking up. It's it pokes up through in South America and Brazil. Rio You're is confusing all intrusive Rio. plutonic rock with extrusive Rio. volcanic rock. Pokes Rio. through is a pluton. That's where the rock cooled before it, it had a chance to come out. It's igneous rock. Oh, it, it, very it, much pokes it, up, it pokes up through in, in Rio. Rio, you see all those big, uh, you see the sugar lump mountain, all those, all those rocks. That's igneous rock, and the, and the whole area is is igneous rock like that. Same thing in China. China has the same kind of uh, pillow rocks poking up through. That's, but that's the exception. Pillow rocks. Yeah, well, the, I call it pillow. You, I call you speak it, in such generalities about this stuff. They're they're like big pillows poking up through. Like the sugar loaf. You know what the sugar loaf mountain is? You know the so statue you're where, where hello, the real statue where, you're using... where Jesus is on top of the statue on top of the, the mountain? That's igneous Brazil? rock. Brazil. That's igneous. <laughs> that's igneous yeah, rock. Yeah, the Cristo Redento, Christ the Redeemer uh, statue. Cristo Redento. Yeah, Christ there we Redento. go. I know that from civilization, yeah. Um Okay. Uh, I <laughs> That's igneous I, rock. That's cool. igneous rock. So what? So what? It doesn't take away the fact that everything else is sedimentary rock over a mile deep everywhere around the world. All right. You're just repeating yourself. I don't know how. No, I mean, that's okay, because it's not Ch sinking jungle, into your jungle. head. The volume, the volume of the sediment layers is not sinking into your head. It's over 100 Cause, million. Because you're wrong, Jungle. That, that's the issue. You're, I'm you're not certain. wrong. It's over yes, 100, it's no, over it's 100 million cubic miles. You know what a cubic mile is? 100 yes, million cubic, cubic miles. miles. Do you know how what that volume is? That's what I'm talking about when I'm talking about evidence of the global flood. It's the, the erosion sediment layers are minuscule by comparison to the sediment layers of the global flood everywhere around the world on every continent. So, <laughs> you, so you're you wrong. You a very good job of always talking and I'm trying to respond that, to you. Just admit is, you're wrong that all the, all this, the, the evidence of the no. global flood is on uh, every continent around the world. Just admit it. No. That all, right. all the uh, sediment layers. I'll be honest, are all, dude. This is not all water deposit. Yeah, you just this lose. It's going to go all night. I'm just, I'm not. Yeah, you just lost. Oh, hold on. Let's, lost let's, let's so move on to something there. else you besides can't the, the you rock. Can't face it because it's too much so, for your worldview. Praise. Praise. There's a global so, flood. Hold on. Hold on. Pray, praise. So, when, when did the Noah flood happen? Um. <laughs> Somewhere in BC. <laughs> I don't know. Sumerian, you know what the Sumerian you know the Sumerian <laughs> civilization? Yeah. All right. You know what the Sumerian civilization, the Egyptian civilization, and the Chinese and the Hindu, they all started five thousand years ago. Yep. I'll At the same time. time. Yeah. They all have calendars no, five thousand 
They all have calendars five thousand years old. Yeah, that's when that's when the major civilizations came together. Yes. We mean came together. That's when they spread out. <laughs> oh man. Who? Hey ogre, can I ask you something? Uh yeah, who's asking? This is the fifth trumpet. How's oh, it going? Hi. Hello. Hey there. Anyways, um, I got him. So I'll see you so, guys. I'll, I'll be back maybe. All right, Jungle. Thanks for coming in, brother. So Good. like you always hear like they say, okay, the China the, the China has a, a flood story. Yeah. There, there was a huge flood in China. So with your research and your background and what you've learned, was there a huge flood in China? Uh, well, historically speaking. Oh well, yeah. Um, there, yeah. there's, there is evidence of a flood in China. Yeah, their I think language, with that, the actually, Yangtze or whatever. Yeah, like, their writing is massively actually, floods actually. all the time. Yeah, like, it's like the Nile. It just, yeah, those flood a lot of times. They're well, actually I mean, writing the the letters that they use, the characters. Have you not seen that? The characters that they use. Yeah, and they put eight people as well. Right. So so they do have flood legends. It's literally in the characters of their writing. Um, fifth, to answer your question, uh, it looks like there was a giant flood of the Yellow River around 10,000 years back, according to archaeological evidence, which would probably coincide with a flood myth perpetuating down over time. So there is a, a direct flood associated with that flood myth, yes. On the Yellow River. Hmm. Yeah, well, I mean, there's an article here that says super flood, so I'm not sure, you know, what that means, but... Uh, there's definite historical data, though, that confirms a, uh, you can call it a uh, worldwide flood if you want, a major flood, you can call it a major flood, probably that. Yeah. And again, I mean, I, I have to look at these things via, does this go or don't doesn't go against my worldview on the subject, right? And if something doesn't go against my worldview, well, then that's a reason to doubt it. And something like if we can find evidence of a giant flood around the original Chinese civilization, and then the Chinese have a flood myth, well, th that's some linkage in my chain, right? Well, I just posted a link. Yeah. I'm gonna the chat. Chat. There's the link. Oh. Awesome. You can look at that. You can see. So there, there's their flood, uh, their flood legend right there in the writing. And I, and I've also, um, I've also looked into this, the flood legends of the all the different cultures around the world, and they actually said that if they were all exactly the same, then you would think that it wouldn't be legitimate. So the fact that there is variation in it, the scholars actually say that proves that it is um, that they're all unique and original. That's a long video, geez. Yeah, I'll, I'll try to find a shorter one really quick. Actually, this looks familiar. I think I've might have seen this before. That one looks like it has a lot of views, but let me try to find. There's a shorter one. Let me try to find it. That was just caught off the cuff. Give me a second. <laughs> yeah, that's cool. Yeah, man. I mean, it's pretty neat. Though. I mean, something. If you think something is mythical, like a, a worldwide flow, whatever, but there's actual evidence for all this stuff. It's pretty cool. Well, there's evidence of people having floods in their area and it being so terrifying they they make a, a story behind it no actually so I, I guess, want to show that actually here hold uh, on one second. praise to turn the story back on you do you think if there wasn't a worldwide flood uh but there was just a lot of local floods that these cultures could make up flood myths you think that's a reasonable assertion um they could make like up at, at that basic yeah. level yeah yeah all right I, no, because I these, no, these legends are old. They, they were before there was communication around the world. So, so these cultures were all separated. We didn't know they yeah. had these flood legends until we, you know, communication got a lot better. So they are sure. unique. 
they are unique to each culture and it's it, that's quite a coincidence and you're basically ignoring historical evidence well, it, historical well japan evidence. J- japan didn't have a flood story so that kind of that kind of puts a little dink into a, a global oh, flood there one Okay, so so the majority of the well, when, when you're when you when you're when you're dealing them. with monsoons, you found one. Constantly. Oh, you found one. That's, that's, that <laughs> yeah, that that kind of that kind of that kind of, that kind of stops up. your global flood narrative. How that, so? that breaks that breaks it down to a local flood, not hey, let, not let global. Let me ask you this. Let me ask you this. What what if what if these flood legends go back before <laughs> so? The further back in history you go, right, the smaller the population of the world is. Right. Okay, so we know that all humans on Earth fall into the three haplogroups. So originally, if you go if you go back far enough, that you know, all of these people. So if you want to say that it was through common ancestry or whatever it is, at some point you're going to have a, a male and a female. Does that make sense? So you're not right. going to that's, that's, that's why I was asking praise when did he think the global flood happened? I believe it's about 4500 years ago. So I put another link. It's a little 6 minute video in the chat. Okay. And I haven't seen it. So I'll find it. But basically, you know, there's a So, so about 6000 years ago, right? Uh, uh 40 about 4500 or so. Is this supposed to be 4500 BC? No. Yeah, no, that's when the like world was created is forty five hundred BC. I can't remember. No, <laughs> no, forty five hundred BC would have been about the time of Adam and Eve. Ah, that's what it was. I knew that it number about, was stuck in my head. Yeah, about about four thousand or so. Yes. So four thousand BC. Approximately so yes. Six thousand so, so years ago. About, no, it would have been about forty five hundred years ago. Was the flood? Forty five hundred years ago. Approximately forty five hundred years ago. Uh, is that right? Yeah, that's right. Hello, this is Sunny. Welcome back. Today is a Father's Day. Happy Father's Day. <laughs> My last two videos about story behind the Chinese characters. I talked about two characters: evil and endurance. According to the book of Genesis, the world became so evil that even God lost patience or endurance. In this video, we will look at two more Chinese characters, blood and a boat or ark, boat. In the book of Genesis, God regretted that he had made human beings. Well, for some good reason. For example, Adam, the first man, was woozy and fickle, and his son, King, was a totally a jerk. From the very <laughs> beginning of the history, <laughs> were not so good. So God decided to kill all of them and all animals on the earth, but God likes a few good men like Noah because according to the Bible, the Bible, he was blameless in nothing to blame. Nowadays, is it possible to meet Mr. Right or Mr. Left or Mr. Wrong, but it is impossible to meet Mr. Blameless. Noah's wife was just too lucky. She was the first and perhaps the very last lucky wife to have such a wonderful husband. I just feel so sorry for all wives nowadays. (laughs) Anyway, God decided to save Noah, his wife, and their two sons and and their wives. No Grandchildren were mentioned. They must have gone to the summer camp. Goodbye, children. <laughs> Great. I think I found a better one. Animals and the birds. I like this. Okay. <laughs> the flood came. Many years passed. People forget the story, but the two Chinese characters 
still keep record of what had happened. Now let's take a look at these two Chinese characters in detail. This is a Chinese character, flood, flood in the modern writing systems. Now let's look at this character in detail. This character only has two parts, the right part and the left part. The right part in the old writing system, the same structure, remember, old Chinese character and new uh, or modern Chinese character, they have the same structure. This part means it's kind of water, water flowing, the water. The second part or left part means together or shear. So shared water means flood or the flood means water altogether. It's everywhere means flood, okay? But this part is very interesting. If you look, if you look at it closely, you will find two hands, like two hands holding up, holding up an object. You may wonder. Hey, can you pause real quick, Chris? Holding what? What's this object? Yeah, Thanks. Sorry, there we go. Um, yeah, I just went to Google and put flood in in the uh, translator, and I'm not getting his character. Does he say what what type of Chinese character this is? Because neither flood <laughs> character looks like that. Yeah, no this this video is really slow. I, I apologize. If I would have known. Um, I would have taken more time to find this, but praise can that there's, there's one more link that I posted. It's only three minutes and I've, I've like looked through it really fast and it looks like it shows a lot more. Can you show that one really quick? Yeah, absolutely. I wish I would have known. I, I should have had this ready, but I, I didn't know. And I have links for all these things too. I don't know why I don't have a link for this. Do you get into these conversations often? No. Uh, uh, yes and no. I in ch in chats and things like that. Yeah, like on social medias. Yeah. Uh, I don't always go live though. Like. And we yes, got Otangelo. I nice. What's up, Otangelo? Good to see you, brother. He has uh, some interesting things to share too. But here we go. Yeah, this one might be faster, a little better. Can you pause that really quick? Can you go can you go back to that last one? All right. Can you pop it? Okay, so the the other one that I've seen, there's a good one. I really need to find it where they actually talk to the commentary. But if you look at the word talk, you can see how it's assembled, right? So dust and breath is alive. And according to Genesis, God took the dust of the earth and he breathed life into it. Does that make sense? So that's how you get the word talk. Again, I got to point out, I go to Google Translate and it doesn't look like that. Well, there's probably well, more than one. That, you know, I don't know how old it is. It's like the are old you looking at simplified and traditional and neither simplified nor traditional Chinese has to talk be that symbol. Is this ancient? Yeah, Chinese probably. Yeah, it's probably like an ancient form, like an original form. Like, it's. Do you think it's going to be the modern one? You know. Well, uh, of course not. I, I can't it's help but want to verify this. Then I mean, <laughs> well, well, isn't there like I, many? I, I, uh, I see you all the time, Org. So I'll, I'll find this out for you. I'll, I'll research it and I'll send you something. And then once you see that, once you see it all verified, then and. 
you can just simply dismiss it all again. <laughs> well, I'm not going to do that. Don't don't accuse me of that. <laughs> well, I mean, here it is in front of you. I mean, you're just you know, you can give me the benefit of the doubt at this time. You can go to YouTube. Well, actually, I'm not claiming you you're. I'm not claiming you're the issue here. I'm simply pointing out that if I go to a Chinese translator, I type in breath or dust or something like that, I don't get his same characters. And I think that's a legitimate point. So if you go on YouTube and you type uh, like Chinese letters proves global flood, you'll see a lot of classroom settings where they're actually teaching these. And it's like an ancient form of writing. But go, uh, go, go ahead and let it play. Uh, please, please. All right, do you see that one? Do you want to pause that? The first man. Do you see how they assemble that letter? Alive dust and man. God created man from the dust. All right, go ahead. I wish the other one had the commentary. I'll find it for you, or Yeah, because I'm trying to verify this video. And <laughs> again, like, I'm, I'm not... Yeah, I'll get I'm you not one. saying that you're trying to lie to me or anything. I'm not trying to accuse you of anything, but it's only fair for me to try to show this stuff, right? I mean, I can't. Yeah, find no, that's it. fair enough because we we have you on live recorded saying this would be a chink in your chain. So I will verify it for you, and then we'll talk about it. Are again. you looking at Mandarin <laughs> or Chinese or some other? Kind? Um, I'm looking at. I, I I pulled up Google Translate for traditional and simplified Chinese. Neither of them do this. I'm trying to find some sort of ancient Chinese list either, although I don't know if it'd be different from yeah, uh, traditional. Historical, maybe? Yeah, try that. And, yeah, I'm just... Then all I'm finding is, like, creationists saying that. If this stuff was common... Um, it's a so common word to be used, I wouldn't need to only find it from creationist literature, right? Well, it, not all of it is. Well, that's what I'm looking for, something... Something that isn't just let me show you the word for boat, and then that's my entire page. I should be able to find man in ancient Chinese characters to verify it because Google disagrees and Google knows all. Mm. <laughs> so, Wiley so does said, Wikipedia. He says, Try looking up Shang, Shang D. Shang D was considered to be the supreme de deity. I can do that. During the Shang Dynasty, but during the Zhu Dynasty. Yeah, okay. leave that up so I can cut Shang Di. Oh, Supreme Deity. Oh, that's 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 the language too, I assume. Or? Yeah, but that's still Ji Young. You're you're about ten, about a thousand years too too young for. For to be twenty five BCE. <clears throat> no, Shang Di seems to be the Chinese word for emperor or deity. That's not like a language. Yeah, but with the the time periods that uh, Wiley was showing was a thousand years too young. Oh, we both don't like it. Okay. <laughs> yeah. I posted a couple of links about the 20, 2500 BCE, so. <clears throat> and what was going on during that time period. So, okay. This one, Wes does show up for a traditional. So that's what's confusing me. Why don't the other one show up for traditional, <laughs> but West shows up for this? Then let's try. But person, for example, does not. Person is a bit different. I think garden. Person and garden are different, but West is. Or can you can you um, write and read uh, old English, like true old English? Oh, 100 percent. Yeah. Like Shakespearean. Oh yeah, all the time. Past time, mine. No, of course not. I'm terrible at that. Okay, so if I were to say, "Hey, this is English," and show you something today, you'd be looking it up and saying, "No, that's not English." And if we didn't understand that it was actually old English, 
we'd kind of be in a quandary right now. I right? get what you're saying. Here but we are. We're looking at something that's that's dating back clearly to the time of the flood, right? And so we're trying to look at it on a modern Google because who, how many people are searching this on Google? They're searching for modern characters. They're not looking for something that's old. So we might actually have to do a little bit of deeper uh, research. And I'm willing so, to do that for you. That's what so I'm saying. My, my first response to that is, sure, that's very possible. This is uh, Chinese that Google doesn't allow. That's possible. Secondly, well, is it probable? Is it, prob um, is it pro it probably is more accurate? Wouldn't you I, say? I have no idea the percentage on that. Uh, I don't know. I actually, I actually well, was about to look up how, how old long, traditional how Chinese long is. How long ago used old English? What was that? Like two hundred years ago? You have problems reading. Yeah, Shakespeare wrote in a way that'd be very hard for me to read. I okay. I completely but, agree with that. How how, but, how long ago was that? Because we're we're talking thousands of years, not hundreds. So again, I I will do the homework for you. I'll find it because I'm interested myself. Sure. I want to I want to have an answer for this, but. I still think it's a relevant point to say, like, for example, the West is the same. That is what the traditional Chinese word for West is. It looks like that. Okay. So, so one, but so one, garden one slash enclosure is completely different. It's two characters, neither so of which look like might a square. Be today, but if you look at the word West, it's showing you it's showing you how they composed that, right? So you have one person, which is Adam, and he's in the garden. Again, Garden is nothing like that. In person, I guess, kind of close. I'm not. I, I know a bit of uh, katakana and hiragana. Your but... argument, your argument, is equivocating a modern Google search with an ancient language, and that's the problem. Well, but you accept West, but you accept West as proof, but you don't accept the lack of garden as not proof. That's you like, can't saying, throw that's like West. saying, hey, we have we have modern letters that Shakespeare used. How come how come the words aren't still the same? I think that you know that this is a last defense here saying, oh, Chinese, they don't have a legend, and I'm showing you. Well, actually, no, they do, and it's their writing, and now you're kind of like in you're like a damage control here. Okay, and I've given you a couple legitimate don't, don't, explanations. Don't play those games, man. That's not well, necessary. No, dude, I've given I'm you being a completely reasonable in my I've problems. You, I've given you an old English example, and we know how Google works off algorithms, and people probably aren't searching this very much. And I told you that I would do the homework, so I don't understand why you're still, you know, fighting fighting against this. <clears throat> I'm other I'm than we know what it voicing implies, my right? I'm voicing my concerns with what's being talked about here. This is supposed to be a discussion. You okay, fair it sounds like you want me to just shut up and fair take enough. it. No, and that's well, I do, but I'm not saying that. <laughs> Thanks. Thank you. At least you're being Thank honest. You. Thank you. Is anyone hearing my sound? Hello. Yeah. Yeah, we got you. Oh, cool. Hey, um, I just put a link in the chat, and it's um, it's off Wikipedia, and it just um, details all of the flood accounts, historical flood accounts according to their countries, and there's three, three uh, for China, and according to a young Earth creation timeline, the flood occurred approximately, circa approximately, 2,344 B.C. Let's try to debunk the next character. Is it, does, does this video play forward? Yeah, there we go. Yeah, let's do it. Try as hard as we can to debunk it because we really don't want it to be true. Don't do that, man. That's not fair. <laughs> um. So Chinese language goes back earliest known origins of six thousand years. That's kind uh, of odd. old Chinese. Maybe that's going to give us what we want. I'm not going to type old Chinese woman into Google. That's not going to be helpful. I mean, to be fair, though, we should let linguists that know what they're doing make these objections. So I'm not, we're not going to turn a horn and say, oh, yeah, this is, you know, proven 
uh, Chris, or um, freaking Chinese uh, language, but I wouldn't even bring that as an objection unless we had a linguist in here. No, that's that's. I mean, yeah, and this is not my area of expertise either, of course. But the first link was in more of a classroom setting, and if you go if you go to um, YouTube and you type "Chinese language proves global flood," you'll actually see like classroom type settings. Right. And there's some long ones. There's videos that are over an hour. We could probably, you know, suffer through one of those. Yeah, I, I won't. I won't belabor my point anymore. But yeah, I, I to me to me when I try to verify these claims, I'm getting different characters. Even if I try looking old Chinese, but I'm not. I don't want to keep hounded on this. So I'll just be quiet for the video. You have a valid point. I'll, I'll, I'll agree with that. Uh, I just posted a link of uh, Chinese history, so. What about that one? Praise, you got Mr. Lizard in the backstage. Yeah. <laughs> You're welcome, Pray Lizard. Thanks. What about that one? Well, you want me to look it up? Woman seems to be correct. I was okay. actually going to... Actually, what I was saying in the... um. The um, live chat is in regards to Shang Di, the deity that is in question that surrounds these characters and whatnot is supposed to be Shang Di. Hence, I was giving Shang Di as a reference point of a time period and what you would be looking up for these characters. I think if two characters turned out correct, I would say it's valid. Okay. So, what about that word, uh, covet, or desire? Um, so, yeah, uh, two trees, kind of. The, Wic the Wiktionary page is ridiculous. That seems to be the word for, like, jungle or forest or something like that. The previous or garden. slide they gave, though, had a different, had desire on it as well. And I don't think that was the same character. I don't. I, I don't understand their. Uh... Yeah, it looks like this word's more for like forest than just two trees. Because I wouldn't call okay. two trees a forest. Yeah, when translating languages from like China or Japan, it gets kind of blurry because one word just say in Japanese, for example, the word well, so, for yokai so... can be translated in multiple different ways as demon, monster. Angel or other things like that. So, do words do words do our words change meaning? Well, I'm talking about like when we are translating them to English, it gets very blurry within regards to Chinese because one at one point in time when people were translating the word yokai into English, they were translated as goblin for some reason, even though that's not what it meant. Yeah, no, I, I I'm agreeing with you, but I'm also saying that sometimes things t will take on a different meaning. You know, like what this this symbol for trees it could have meant it could mean forest today. It could have meant trees, you know. But there's two trees. Sure. You know um, what I'm saying? Um, words change. I mean, what what did they used to call a cigarette? I won't even use that word now. Yeah. Right. You understand what I'm saying? Well, what, yeah. What, what, but when as, I was um, a kid, we'd watch the Flintstones and what was it? The Flintstones and so what would they would have? You'd, you'd, they'd say you'll have a gay old time. That means yeah. something totally different today. I just watched right? uh, White Christmas, and they were yeah, they so were using they were careful. saying "gay" in the old meaning all over the place. Yeah, <laughs> it's interesting. So, so that's a fair point. Would you agree? Things sure. Um, in, 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 and I guess just, huh? I know. I, I guess I'd on. have to go back to Praise's point that we all just kind of have to go off whatever the internet tells us for these conversations. No. I mean, no, I, I'm agreeing with you, Work. I, I think that you're, that you have a valid, I think that you have a valid point and I'm just, 
trying to bring up another valid point that things That's change. Cool. Things change, meanings change, languages change. Yeah, so I, that, I completely agree. Okay. Well, and also when you're dealing with like what Lizard was saying, that it could have multiple different meanings behind it. Of well, the what word. about the word chick? You know, that has multiple meanings. Right. But I mean, how many meanings does that does the F word oh, take on in our society? <laughs> right, but that uh, it's not really helping your trying to prove that China had a global flood. <clears throat> well, not even with... I, 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 I think that you're, um, that you're translated really... translated different ways, but the reason I also brought it up is because it is example an example of us taking languages from the Orient and translating it falsely, because that's not actually what you're supposed to translate it as. And I was just giving an example. Yeah. All right. But go, but go ahead. Like I said, there's a video. I will find it. There was I, I saw this... Someone shared it like a long time ago. It was a short and sweet, and they went through each one of these things and put it together. It was really good. So, can we? Uh, do you want to? you want to keep going? Want to play it? Oh uh, yeah, here we go. What about that? What about that one? <laughs> well, again, uh, no, so, <laughs> my, my first issue is he has used Garden in two different uh, two different characters already. Garden a couple back was just a box, and now Garden is a box with a squ with a you know plus sign well, in it. Well, so that yeah, there's something in the Garden, right? So so if Garden is a box, I'm just making it up as I go. I, I really don't know, but if if Garden is a box. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, if that's garden with something in it, I don't know. Um, it looks like devil's kind of close. Yeah, it looks like devil's close to that. Oh, uh, for traditional Chinese. But and again, also he's using life in two different ways here as well. So it's, it's confusing. Are they, pulling from any, are they pulling from any particular text, or at least bones and tortoise shells? Given the fact that it surrounds Shangdi. No, no. What? Um, because a lot of this the information that a lot of this ties into the deity that is tied into it's the deity known as Shangdi, which from what we most know about this deity is from bones and tortoise shells and other stuff like that. The character is literally written on these bones and whatnot. Yeah, but yeah. yeah, I guess uh, redefined it. Go, uh, going through the quick Chinese translation on Google, uh, the only one that's remotely similar is Devil. Okay. So, and life, secret, garden, and man are all nothing alike. Well, man's kind of is. And well, what, why would the word devil be look be be similar? And the devil the word devil is composed of certain characters, and so here we have a. A lineup of what those characters could be. Well, I mean, we also yeah. do have have another way. Even though we say it as devil and Satan in our modern language, there's also other ways to render ours version. Hence, you can render it as some people say. Of course, think of devil as a demon, <laughs> or a demon, of course. But then also you have adversary and accuser. Both all, are also English words we have in the English. And um, to plus, uh, plus to they want to know who. Satan was back then because uh, Christianity wasn't around. Redefined. Yeah, that, to go to your point not, exactly. Not, let me, let me to go to your point that red thing in one second. I'm yeah, sorry. sure. Go ahead, Org. To go to your point exactly, the only one of those five that's remote, that's very close, is Devil. Life, Secret, and Garden look nothing like that in traditional Chinese, according to Google. And Man is a stretch. Okay. So you can't say it they're added together to form that when each of the components is wrong. Okay. So Red Fang, if if we are going to address the Bible on the Bible's terms and not straw man it, the further back in history we go, the greater the knowledge of these events would have been, right? To the point where someone is just like first generation after the flood. So when you say that these people didn't have a knowledge of these things, it would actually be the opposite. Actually, if you if you actually looked at the timeline that I posted, <clears throat> China goes way farther back than 
than uh, 20, 2500 BC. So, <clears throat> yeah, so I mean, we, we can go into the dating methods and we can go down that road if you want. But, but even, even just if I were to say, all right, I'm not even going to argue with that. <clears throat> all of these, well, there, there was no, there was no pause in their timeline. Okay. There's our things like in the, in the Egyptian cultures where we, we were calculating these histories based on the, the different rulers of the time. And then we realized that they, these rulers sometimes would overlap. And so that, that just totally changed all of the timelines as we knew it. So, you know, if we, we can assume today, if you want to call something, a, it's hard to call something a fact because if it changes, then it was never a fact to begin with. So you, so you have to be careful with that. But so well, let, me, let me just say, I don't even want to argue with that. And I'll say, all right, fine. You can go back 10,000 years. I mean, you, you really think that your last common ancestor was, what, 200,000 years ago? And they lived in caves and there's, there's no record of languages. There's no record of writing. There's no records of civilizations for 200,000 years. And then all of a sudden, in the last 10,000 years, you know, something happened and all of a sudden our brains just started working and we started farming and, <laughs> and built, you know, cities. And I mean, come on, that's just nonsense. That doesn't even make yes, sense. Just, just you like you believe gold. that there was a global flood that happened. Okay. 4,000 so, years ago when world China <laughs> never, never was okay. affected by this global flood because their history yeah, kept yeah. on going so, on. So, so <laughs> 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 Sam, but, okay, but, hey, believe what Sam, you want. So let's we'll just keep moving. Sam, 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 yeah. Sam, Sam. Yes. Can you hear me? I can hear you, Gavin. Uh, Sam, I just put a link in the chat, and it's it lists the countries that have got um, worldwide flood um, stories, and China is listed, and it's actually got three flood stories okay. out of China. One's called You the You Why You the Great Why You the Great. Then it's got Nuwa in and it's a U with two dots over the U, a W and an A, and then there's just what's called the Great Flood of China. All right. So thank China, you. China oh, has got has got flood. Um, flood well, no, uh, no one's night. <clears throat> so this oh. this what we're looking at right now. It, it is a good evidence. The reason why that we're struggling with it is because I had to find this on the fly. I didn't have it saved, but, but again, I will do my homework. I will find the right video and I will answer your questions and I'll put something together. <clears throat> so next time we have this conversation, then we'll try to find some other reasons to dismiss it. Yeah. I mean, don't you think every atheist in freaking town would be on creations if they were lying about this? So I'm just saying, yeah, so I, don't, I mean, those articles would probably show up. Or, or they're just bored having this discussion. <laughs> are, we reasonably settled, are we reasonably settled by about the approximate date of the of the flood? Yeah, I'd say. I well, I'll agree with that. I'd say, Gavin. Okay, cool. By the way, um, or the videos, the video titles they posted in the private chat. I'm yeah. not sure about the second one, but I know the first one is one that ties into these. You know characters and where I first heard of some of this information from. From like I said, if anything, if you're gonna find anything on any of this information, I guess just look up Shang Di and the Chinese char characters and scripts surrounding him. What? Who is Shang Di? You said that's a like a mythical character. It's it's basically the it's basically the deity that they that has been tied into these characters and whatnot. The, and when I say characters, all, I don't mean like God, human characters. Are you talking I mean, about? You're talking about I mean, like some, like a, 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 some talking false about the, god. Well, wait, I guess you would consider it a false god unless you're going by what these. Yeah, what so these that so are I talking mean, about. Wait, I wasn't finished. Unless you're going by what these Chinese people that are, are promoting these Chinese characters are like, saying, and then there's bas you're basically saying that it is the god El Shaddai, Yahweh, whatever you want to say. Yeah, so these characters are directly correlated to the biblical flood event. So I, I don't know how Shang Di would help, but you're welcome to go ahead and do that research yourself. No, the reason I'm bringing it up because when I first heard about the whole Chinese characters and whatnot, it was because it was surrounding the the Chinese deity known as Shang Di. Yeah, I, I understand that. 
I understand that. Supposed to tie that. into the Chinese characters. See, these these characters are are addressing the biblical narrative of the of the flood, not what Shang Di. So the Shang the Shang Di is not not relevant. But point taken. Well, or, actually, well, actually the reason I'm saying it is also because it's attributed as the, you know, being that did all this. All right, so now oh. everyone just listen for 30 seconds. Good stuff. Here we go. Written record of Noah's flood predating Moses can be found in ancient Chinese writing. Chinese is a picture based language, and it is common for smaller symbols to, become, to make other words. For example, here's the word for large boat, made up of these symbols for vessel, the number eight, and people. That's Noah's Ark. The Chinese language from thousands of years ago tells the same story as Genesis. To learn about other Chinese characters, go to aj83.com slash Chinese. Here you go, AG83, people. <laughs> no, don't do it. God, don't do it. <laughs> Talk com dot or forward slash Chinese. So, but yeah, I mean, my argument is essentially that the, the, the characters that are presented in all these videos... Um, I can't verify, so I can't take that as evidence. A lot of them just simply don't show up when I try to do a search. So, so Org, let me ask you a, a question, and I'm asking you because I am not uh, very knowledgeable in the field of study that you are um, familiar with. So where I live, there is a, a, a giant cliff by the beach, right? Sweet. And and the high school or the, the schools will go and they'll take the kids there because you can to see all these distinct layers that they say – laid down you know over your deep time ages and each each layer represents you know x amount of time and all of that right you know the you know the story yeah <clears throat> so i've gone there as as an adult you know i was raised that went up in the public education system learned about all the garbage that they teach you know the one the one-sided <laughs> arguments and all of that right okay that's the difference between brainwashing and education if it was an education i would learn both sides but i didn't they only taught me one so Anyway, I digress. So I go back there now and I look at these layers that they've been bringing, still bringing kids to. <clears throat> One of the layers, there's a bunch of large, smooth, rounded rocks, you know, because the, the erosion happens and they wash the dirt out. And so you see the, it exposes the layer. You know, obviously we can see the layers. We know what that looks like. Yeah, but it but it exposes them and, they, you know, they'll kind of fall out over time. But there's one layer that has a bunch of these large, rounded smooth rocks now how would you ex i would understand if they were sharp jagged broken rocks maybe but how do you get round smooth rocks in a layer without upsetting that fine boundary of the layer directly beneath it okay so about, like the, the grand the, canyon or something well so to address to address your question, um, the basic way to look at geology, the a good the way I def describe uniformitarianism to people is um, look around you. What is happening on the Earth right now is also what happened in the past. A river, the way a river flowed now is the way a river flowed ten million years ago, right? So you need well, to find something. That's not that's not accurate because you guys, you guys will invoke catastrophes here and there, right? Well, I, 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 I'm getting to the point here. I'm getting to the point. Here. Okay. So I'm going to assume the cliff face is sandstone, most likely, right? It like it looks like beach sand. Yeah, that, I don't enough. know. Like I said, I, I don't know. Possibly. So no, it's a, gonna... it, no, 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 no. It, it's a bunch of different layers. It's a few well, the, the layer that has the big rocks in it. It's not is all sand. Part? No, there, there is one. There is, it's funny you say that, <clears throat> there is another beach by me that does have a big cliff and they are all layers of sandstone. Like you could drag it, you could take a stick and you could carve into these. Yeah. Okay, so the one that I'm talking about, you could not do that. There's layers of rock. Um. So is your question why the rocks be rounded or how the rocks get in there? Well, both. So there's, it's, both? it's. It's a rhetorical question, really, because however you answer it, I'm not really going to believe you. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm used to that. But, <laughs> you heard that conversation. Course, course, <laughs> jungle jogging. I'm not looking but, but here, but it, here's here's the here's the question. Well, do you want to know my answer? Yeah, I'd like to know your answer. Okay, so, okay, because you can't get around rock unless it's had erosion. 
but you can't have eroded you can't have erosion on top of a layer with a distinct boundary because there's no evidence of that erosion in that boundary so how do you get those round rocks that are that are clearly had to <clears throat> been through some sort of rock tumbler and place them on a layer without upsetting the layer directly below it see i now that i now i understand that there is a creation model now when i go and look at the same stuff that you look for very long by the way well i can i just see things differently (laughs) now like i understand why how you can look at something and you can say hey look according to my deep time i can see why these are and and i i agree i was the same now now that i well my my question is how do you explain those round tumbled rocks being laid on top of a, a distinct boundary yes okay okay so First of all, just a quick correction. Weathering is doing damage to something. Erosion's just moving it. So you would say the rock was weathered, not eroded. Just well, we had to so get there also, know. right? Unless it rained rocks. Well, the rounding of it is a weathering process, not an erosion process. Erosion is just how something moves. That's it. Well, oh, right. But so to, besides so that. To clarify, to, to clarify <clears throat> when you have weathering, you have erosion somewhere because you can't have rain not running off right that has to go somewhere how do you have one without the other they're separate things you can weather something without eroding it and you can erode something without weathering it but you are correct they also can happen simultaneously yeah it's like a, a wheel and example, a rim right you a good e- need them both they're separate a, but you need them both a good example of them having simultaneously would be say moving water uh if you go to a, a river or a stream all the rocks in the stream are going to be very rounded because just as you said, the water is slowly tumbling the rocks. The rocks are being hit abrasively with the rest of the seabed and slowly rounding them. That's uh, yeah. Okay. It's called spherosity oh. in the rocks. Okay. So, so or I'm, I'm not trying to interrupt you. I just, I'm going to give you a little bit more information not me, by the way. I'm sorry. You're doing a very poor job of not interrupting. Me. <laughs> Sorry. Um, well, okay. So, but these rocks are, I don't mean the tops are rounded and the bottoms are flat. I mean, they, they look like they've gone through a tumbler. Like, yeah, like, they're like, like spheres, I, right? Yeah. Like you could roll them. They're round. So yeah, like bowling balls. Yeah. Like pool sure. ball. yeah. Yeah, yeah. There we go. Yeah. No, that's exactly something that happens. And there's a, I, there's a uh, way to look at sediments, which is not only sphericity or how rounded it is, but also oblongness which is right a skipping stone you want it to be very flat and large sure. right whereas like a oblong coin yeah exactly like those things that squ- squish the coins and different sedimentary environments will give you oblong versus spherical if something has a long time if it's a very slow moving current like a really slow trickling stream where the rocks not going to be pushed up a lot but stuff's going to rub against, against against the top of it that gives you a very oblong rock because the rock isn't tumbling against stuff, stuff is tumbling against it, like a sandpaper effect. It's Whereas if it's a stronger that's, current, you're going to get more spherical rocks because the rock itself is going to be moving and different parts of it are going to be hitting sediments and stones and what have you. Yeah, so there's no way that you can have that process that you just described without also erosion. You can't have so much no, I, I wasn't trying to make without... the argument that it wasn't. I was just, I was just correcting you Erosion okay. doesn't break stuff. Erosion is moving stuff. Weathering is breaking stuff. Sure. It's a technical thing. It's irrelevant, really. So but. these rounded Ooh, rocks. The rock so, so do, you have a, do you have a dog by any chance? Uh, I currently have cats. Lots of them. Have you had, have dogs? had dogs? Okay. So like, did your dog used to go out and poop in the backyard? Uh, we trained to use the toilet, but I've seen dogs poop. <laughs> what? <laughs> At- so when our dog goes and poops in the backyard and then and it rains, right? The rain will will knock that poop down like a like a pyramid. Yeah. It doesn't it doesn't round the bottom of it because it's it it's sitting on the ground. So when you have these rocks that have looked like they've gone through a tumbler, I don't believe that you can have a round rock at the result of a rock. If I have a big huge rock and I set it on the ground and I turn my hose on it for the for you know 10,000 years, the top of it will round and the top will become smooth. I can see that. But there's there's no way you're going to it's going to end up looking like 
like if I dropped uh, some silly putty from up high and I dropped it on the ground, the, the bottom would be flat. The top would be round. So this goes to what I was saying initially. Um, now let me collect my thoughts here real quick. Um, first of all, this is the conversation about something being oblong versus spheroidal, right? right. The what Your description of the hose, that's when the rock wouldn't be moving, so only one side of it would begin that sandpaper effect. That is correct. Right. However, if the rock itself is caught in the current because it's the current's large enough or the rock is small enough that the current will move, different parts, different sides of the three-dimensional object will be eroded and over time, that will average to a more spherical look. And a right, good okay. example of this is go to the end of any uh, medium-sized creek or river. You're going to see a lot of rocks that have a very spheroidal, uh, spheroidal shape to them at the ends of those because they've traveled the entire length of that waterway and have been deposited in the delta, what have you, and they have that round shape to them. Okay. Oh, that makes sense. I'll, I'll, I'll agree with that. Now, now, here's the problem, okay? Based on what you just said, we have these round rocks that are inner layer that according to what you just said, which what we would observe, right? It would have to be somewhat of a violent scenario that would have to round these rocks and move them. Like you said, they had to be moved. Now, now here's the magic. You have to do that without upsetting the layer directly below it. And that's a thin layer. Do you see the problem? You can't have this process that you just described taking place without upsetting the layer underneath. That's nonsense. You can't have that. I, I don't. I, you'll never convince me that that can happen. And and so my my example or my my next question would be. Well, it, that, how, don't jump to the next question. Let me answer okay. what you just said. Okay. Yeah. Go ahead. So, am I going to convince you? Gonna, no. I don't. I don't think no. I'm going to convince Gavin. I think I'm going to praise right. I'm not here to convince you guys. I'm not an anti-theist. I, I yeah. believe what you want, right? I've been there. But been there, done that. But to answer your question, how would I explain that process? I would yeah. explain how that rock got into that sediment the exact same way I, I explained to you how that rock rounded in the sense that that rock was in an environment that was uh, the erosional factor was strong enough to carry it to that spherosity, to that particular geometric shape. But after it hit that shape, it stopped moving long enough for the sediment to build around it. And we have evidence of this because if you dig into a riverbed, you will find rocks below the riverbed that have these shapes to them. What's Over the assumption time, there? That rock the would stay there and it would grow up. Uh, and it would, the sediment would grow on top but of it. But what's the assumption in your riverbed analogy? What's, what's the assumption? Well, it's there's no assumption. Dig into sure a river and you will find sure rocks. There is. Right, right, right. But you're assuming those rocks got there according to your processes. You're assuming you'll never know because you didn't see. But what <laughs> <laughs> but what we have seen though, right? Um, we've done experiments in stratification. In fact, I believe that was one of the links I posted in the in the live chat. So what was it? It was until like the 70s somebody asked a question, a fair question. Have we ever done experiments with stratification? And the answer was no. So this whole model that you've learned was constructed without any experimental observational uh, evidence. And so when we do, though, see things happen in nature, right, like the Mount St. Helens eruption, we can actually observe these layers that were said to have taken these deep amounts of time. We can observe them getting laid down really fast, instantly. And from our experiments in stratification, that's the only way we know that they can be laid down is with water. So the fact that we have these layers all around the world, as Jungle Jargon was talking about, knowing that they have to be laid down water based on observable evidence, they have to get laid down real, rather quickly so it, I guess now we have to decide what are we going to, are we going to believe the observable evidence or are we going to believe the theory that was constructed before any observable evidence and testing was done? So again, you, 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 you're, you're saying like what sounds like a question and then you're continuing on and you're not letting me address the question as said. Um, 
you say I can't prove to you that that rock, but that that rock that's below the riverbed was put there by the river. You can no, 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 no. Uh, with the time, the time process, according to your model. So, right? are you referring directly to my example of dig into a riverbed? You find rocks underneath the river. Are you referring exactly directly to that example? Uh, we're as, we're assuming the process, the time process, the layers. Let me let me try to. Let me try to give it. You, you kept river? going so far. I didn't know what you were referring to anymore. Like, I'm just going for it. I'm sorry. <laughs> like it's kind of so, hard to have or, a conversation. Or, now. Or let's say I truck in about a foot of dirt in my backyard and I compact it, right? And then I take, I and then I get some rocks and I violently move them around and I get these water turrets back there and I put so much water that I move these rocks around. I get them rounded and then lay them down. What's going to happen to the layer underneath those rocks? What's going to happen to that dirt I just put back there? Is it going to wash out? Or is it going to stay? A nice fine boundary. Uh, Sharp. It, dep it depends 100% on what the rock is and what the dep and what the erosional environment is like. It could stay there. It could move. It depends on what's going on. If you, I mean, if you give it enough force to move, it'll move. But if it's something hard, if it's like an igneous or a nice or something like that, it ain't going to move. Like if it's so, a rock, it's much less likely to move and much less slower than if it's a soft sediment. Sure. But when we find these layers that are said to have been laid down over these long periods of time, some of those layers are really hard, but some of those layers in between are soft. Yeah. And then you'll have another layer on top. So like I'm saying, at some point, you're going to have to address the scenario of me trucking some dirt into my backyard, having a very violent reaction for, you know, thousands and thousands of years to the point that we're now rounding rocks and dragging them along. And the whole time we're doing these experiments, right? We cannot disturb that layer of dirt that I just put down. That's a so fairy you're, tale. You're throwing That's a lot a of assumptions at me. Like we can't disturb that area of dirt. Well, that can. is a, that is a very interesting assumption that you have to make to me because again, my model is essentially I see a river I see what the river is doing. I see what the river has done. If I find in the in the rock record something that looks a lot like what that river did, I can make a one to one connection there. If I see in the rock record a uh, bunch of soft sediment with a couple big stones in it, like you're saying that are rounded, I know the only way I can really round something is by enough speed and enough abrasion to round it. Right. Not too much, otherwise it would break. But I need, and I also need enough time for that rock to round, right? That doesn't happen fast in yes, nature. The, the reason why I'm saying that you can't upset the layer beneath it is because we have these distinct fine lines. And yes. so if, if you're disturbing those, then they're going to be more of like a blur, like a transition. You're not going to have a sharp line that's like literally just a perfect, so the, perfect the issue, sharp the line. Issue with the disc, you have an issue with disconformities, which are very direct lines between different sediments, right? That's the geologic term for them. And what I don't think you're allowing is, one, for a lack of deposition or erosion. There's plenty of places in the world right now that water isn't being eroded out and, water is, and something isn't being deposited, right? If it rains in your backyard, but the but the sediment and the soil don't go anywhere though it just the water goes into the ground you're not eroding anything the water is still staying there so if you have a situation where a river is flowing the river dries up and then something else comes in starts depositing on top of that you're wanting there to be a lot of digging into the riverbed to destroy it but that's not necessarily what would happen. If a sand, if a lake comes in and a beach comes in, starts depositing a sandstone on top of that river, say because the lake is expanding, and what was once river is now beach, producing a sandstone, you're not necessarily going to have to disrupt the soil sediment to get that sand. And especially when it all collapses down under pressure to form, to go from a sediment to a sedimentary rock, when it takes that required pressure to do that, that, uh, see, that, uh, cementation of those matrices when that happens you can get those fine layers because you have a point you have a time period between the deposition of the two sure some of the river layer could have been cut off i see no problem with that the 
sequence you're looking at does not have to be the entirety of the sequence as it was initially deposited. Okay, so um, time is time is not your friend though in this because what happens with time? Things grow. Uh, is, are you looking for Animal, a song an, animals, <laughs> animals dig holes in it. Okay, yeah, think, we think, we have evidence of that too. You can find animal tracks and um no not, not, not shale layers tracks. and stuff like that. <clears throat> like roots would dig holes and the roots would yeah, rot out. Root, would, yes. I mean that would be this that would be not the, the that would be like the standard. That wouldn't be something that we just oh wow, look this we found this. This is kind of neat. I mean it, that would they would be everywhere. Well, but, the I mean, what, what that, landscape the do you with what that land argument, the problem with that argument is you're expecting the root tracks to be preserved under the deposition because it, a sand doesn't just become sandstone. It requires compaction. You need to bury sand in order for it to harden to become sandstone for the liquid and stuff to be pushed out, right? Okay, so... That compaction destroys a lot of what you're talking about. Where it, is, where it doesn't are unique and cool. The, the problem that I have, though, is when your root... when you when oh, there's a lot of problems okay so let's say you have your environment right that's whatever is happening in your environment is producing a certain color of this layer and then overnight whatever whatever is producing that color just changes and now all of a sudden you have a full different material full different color and all, you know so so what happens in the environment that's going on for thousands of years producing this layer. And then overnight something changes and all of a sudden for the next thousands of years, it produces this layer. <clears throat> the problem is when you have these time, this, this, like you're talking about a pause, a plant's going to go down through that new forming layer, according to your model. And it's going to root down into the old layer. And that's going to start upsetting the soil. It's not just the tracks. I mean, you have, you have animals that dig through. There's very few places that you're going to go where you're just going to find a very barren. I mean, uh, uh, maybe the sand dunes, but plants even grow in the sand dunes. If you get outside of the sand dunes, I mean, we look around, we see life. Even in the middle of the desert, you see animals that dig holes. They, you know, you so see plants if, and they're going to upset those layers. This, if you want to take this route, let's go for a specific example. Uh, I assume you accept my, uh, my uh, scenario of a river feeding into a lake, the lake's growing, eventually the river slowly turns into a beach, right? You accept that scenario? That's plausible to you? So you're saying that there's a riverbed feeding an area, and the area eventually turns into a lake? Yeah, but let's say it goes to beach first. Right? A river's going in, and then the river dries up for some reason, but the lake continues to grow, and the river is overtaken by a beach zone. I don't know. According to uniformitarianism, that river should have been flowing for the whole time and never dry up. But all right, we'll, we'll go ahead. We'll go ahead <laughs> for the sake of argument. All right. So <laughs> if we use that argument, explain in that scenario what's going on with your uh, roots, with your animals. Why, why is the soil, sure. why is the river soil have to be disturbed in a way that we can see once it's deposited and turned into a sedimentary rock? Sure. I, I, I think I have an excellent example that we can all go out. If we go out into nature, what, like what are we going to find? What are we going to find next to those rivers? Close to the river. In fact, the closer we get to that body of water, whether it's moving or it's a lake or a river, what are we going to find? We're going to find plants thriving and growing. We're going to find ecosystems. And those roots are going to be upsetting that fine boundary layer. I just don't see it. It's just not plausible for me. You you can't get those sharp layers any other way than a flood. They have to be laid down quick. There's so there's I, no explanation for these sharp, fine light layers. So again, I'm it's trying to. I, I I very much want to work on defending my side than attacking your side. So I'm, I'm not going to sure. try to get into the problems with the flood doing exactly what you're saying. But where is that? Where is, where are those roots disrupting that layer? Because at in my worldview, you don't have cemetery rock yet. Okay. You gotta you gotta dig you gotta bury deep in order to get that compaction necessary, right? Okay. You can so dig in your say, backyard quite a distance before you hit any actual rock. 
Uh, you beyond the scope of roots. Okay. I I have a um that that brings in a whole nother problem that I have with your model. But we'll hold I'll hold off onto that. But let me try to answer your your model, your um <clears throat> your scenario. So these layers are laid down thousands of years. So something in an environment happens for thousands of years and then immediately overnight it changes and that causes a different layer, different composition of materials, different color, all of that I stuff. I didn't say overnight. Well, it has to happen quick because you've got these very, I mean, these layers are so perfectly flat and like there's, so, okay. So anyway, what do you want a week? You want a year? You can't have a year. What What's the a disconformity? Again? So because right. because as hey, that next Sam, layer Sam, starts, let me, to build, let me answer your question, please. Okay, Sam. A disconformity simply means a point where deposition stopped. Whatever was forming the uh, lower layer stopped forming that, right? And then whatever formed the upper layer started forming that. The amount of time between those two, you can't necessarily know. Well, However, here's, here's why I say that we do ahead. know. Because, because the first time it rains, what's going to happen to that quarter inch of new material, you know, or an eighth of an inch or a sixteenth of an inch? You're, you got this new layer that's starting. You got like a sixteenth of an inch. And then, oh, my gosh, El Nino comes along, washes that whole layer again. And during that time, you have these plants that are growing and they're taking root. So as your new layer is growing... It's getting destroyed by all the life, all the plants, by the rain, by the road. So you can't get that distinct boundary. You just can't. I just don't see it. There's no way. And, and, and the river. We, again, you, I, I'm trying to figure out a way to explain my process because what you're descri describing as my process is not sounding like my process to me, right? I'm not, I'm not trying to accuse you of straw manning, but I don't think you understand my argument very well. But no, so I was actually going to ask. I, I do. The, um, question um, in question of the, you know, location that you're referring to. Um, what's the place that you're referring to, and what I guess best way to put it, formation? Are you referring to? He doesn't need to it, say. I you can just look up place. like Yellowstone. Right. And who have sandstones and shales well, stacked on top well, of it. I mean, in particular, the one he's referring to. You know what I mean? To yeah. look at what the rocks actually, well, at least or the layers look like. When, right. you're, when your old layer ends and that new layer begins, immediately time is a problem. Because you're going to have plants growing that are going to upset that fine boundary. You're going to have water erosion tearing, carrying that new layer away. So immediately when that old layer stops and that new layer begins, immediately time is your enemy. So I posted a picture of an example that we're talking about here where the white, I believe, is going to be a shale and then the red is going to be... No, sorry. The red is a shale and the white is a sandstone. Right? And... You're saying that by the time that sandstone started forming, all that shale should have been washed away? Is that your no, argument? <clears throat> I no, I'm, I, I'm, saying, I'm saying that something in your environment changes, which ends the old layer and begins the new layer. Yes. Okay. Shale, shale and shale comes from mud, sandstone comes from sand. Okay, so that new layer starts forming, right? Yes. Okay, so does that layer lay down, like, how, how fast does that layer grow? Well, it depends on the sandstone. I mean, a uh, beach can grow yeah. over the course of hundreds of years. Okay, so immediately when that new layer starts forming, does it ever rain? Ever? Um, I would assume, sure. So what's going to happen to that new layer that's starting to form? Where's it going to go when it rains? It rains on beaches, but we still have beaches. I don't get your question. <clears throat> but that's sand. That's different. And actually, that's not even accurate because you can a, a storm can remove a beach, and one and one storm can remove a beach, and one storm can bring it back. I live yeah. by the beach. I see it. Like they just they just washed away a whole parking lot because the freaking coastal commission wouldn't let them put rocks out there. 
And the federal <laughs> government had to get involved because it was about to wash out the train tracks. Mm-hmm. And intermittently, another storm would come and put the beach back. Yeah. So, so that, so I, so again, what about a river with a a, according to your beach analogy, <laughs> how do you have a fine layer when one day the beach is gone, the next day a new one is back? Do you see? So, in any of these scenarios, I'm just not seeing it. And Iron Charioteer, you can come in here and you can challenge this and you can explain to me why this logic works too. I'm, I definitely does not look I'm, so I'm, trying I, my be- I'm trying my best here, Sam, but I. Like I think the issue I'm having is I'm trying I, I I promise I'm not trying to be rude here, but like I'm trying to explain a concept, but we have like a different level of base knowledge on the subject. Like I, I, I'm I'm having a problem visualizing what your issue is because if a mud is deposited, right? And then the beach, the sand starts depositing on top of that. Is some of that mud going to be washed away? Yeah, sure. I have no problem with that, right? But there's going to be eventually be a point in time when there's enough sand that the sand's going to stay there. When that sand stays there, then you start the deposition of sand. Oh, guys. Okay. That that might work for a scenario that doesn't, like I said, if we're going to ignore the fact that the beaches can change daily. Yeah, but the beach is still there, right? Like when the storm comes in, are you saying that it takes every piece of sand off the beach or you, just destroys you cannot the beach? Have, sand? <laughs> you cannot have a boundary, a sharp, distinct layer on the beach. Impossible. Well, if Impossible. you dig down, into- I, I live, I live by the beach, dude. Yeah. I, I, I believe you. I, I live I, like a, like less than a mile away. Awesome. I, I'll visit day. in the summer. You, we'll have a good time. You'll never, you'll never, in fact, <clears throat> If you look up, oh gosh, someone was just posting all the links to how much sand they were trucking into this beach down in Florida uh, every year. They have a like a thirty-three million dollar uh, allowance or budget just to truck in sand. Yeah. So, understanding that, how do you get a how do you get these layers? By so the beach? I guess let me let me try phrasing this question a bit differently. If you dig down vertically into the beach what are you going to hit yeah i understand that well you're going to hit you're going to hit non beach at some point right right you can hit sure. some sort of rock sure so but according to your model i don't see how you can how that can make sense so you think that rock was put there by the flood <clears throat> yeah i think it all was i think the only way that you can get these layers is by rapidly depositing them. You can't do it slowly. So that's why I keep, I, I, I understand. And I, I, I understand that you have a knowledge, right? That I don't have and, and, and things that you have been told. It makes me better than you. It, yes. Correct. I, I'm not, I'm not trying to say that you're insulting me. I'm just saying. Red, like, Red, do, you, do you believe that the continents were all together at one point, or do you believe that we're already separated? <laughs> In technically, we are all, are so connected. I mean, that's a good it's not point. Like we're just floating free form in the ocean. I'm sorry, I had to make that so, joke. That's true. Well, it is true. So, hey, hey so Org, I, yeah. I I understand what you mean that you that you have a knowledge, right? Sure. But but I'm just trying to from a logical breakdown of this knowledge that you have. Okay, you can't get those layers. <laughs> you can't. So, so, so here's here's what I'm trying to get you to to answer that you're having a hard time, or I'm maybe I'm just having a hard time understanding your answer. Sure. So I'll try to say it one more time. Okay. You've got something in an environment is causing one layer. Correct. And then at some point, whatever is happening changes, which I have a problem with that too. But that's a whole nother thing. Okay. But something in the environment changes, and all of a sudden, this one layer that you were getting is gone, and now you have a new layer forming. If that so, layer doesn't form instantly, you're immediately so, going to have growth happening. You're going to have rain. You're, it's going to be washing away. It's going to be eroding faster than it forms. That's observable. That's what we yeah, observe. Yeah. Okay, so you, yeah, I think the issue – 
the issue I have with your sentence is one, the is gone, right? If you have mud deposited for some reason, and then you have a, a big stack of mud, and then sand starts to be deposited, say the lake, uh, the lake shores receding and the beaches going where the lake used to sit, you have sand being deposited, you still have that stack of mud down below there. Uh, will plants show up as the uh, lake recedes and the sand dune comes in? Will animals get in there? Sure, no problem. But the difference between the sediment, the mud and the sand, and the sandstone and shale is a, is a factor of compression. You don't necessarily have, if you go out and you see a two foot uh, tall section of sandstone, that doesn't mean you had two feet of sand. That means you had more than two feet of sand that was crushed down. When you crush that down, you would destroy those over time. You would destroy those roots, those animal tracks, those uh, burrow holes. No, what no. Have you in the show? No. I, mean, I mean, we do find you. crocodiles flattened nice pancakes in the fossil record. Yeah, and those so, are the exceptions, not the rule. So, Org, here's the problem, though. So, you're from, from what you just described, right? From what you just described makes sense. But here's the problem. Those plants are growing the whole time. It's not like they weren't there for a bunch of time and allowed this layer to slowly form for thousands and thousands of years. No. During those thousands and thousands of years, as these layers were slowly forming, you're going to have these plants. You're going to have animals digging through it. Yes. You, you know, you're going to have this process that is disturbing this nice, fine boundary that you that you're trying to achieve. I'm saying that there's no explanation for that boundary to be achieved unless they were laid down fast. And, and here's the thing. We can, ha we have observable evidence of what I'm saying. You don't. Okay. We <laughs> walk. Well, tell me I'm wrong. Okay. So look, when Mount St. Helens really? erupted, what happened? We watched these layers lay down really fast. That's the only way they can form. We have experiments and stratification. <laughs> So I understand that you have a theory that you, you learned in school. That's fine. And I understand that, you know, I don't have that kind of knowledge. But based on the observable evidence, you cannot get these layers to lay down and have distinct boundaries with this long time allowance. It just isn't going to happen. And yeah, you would find I, plants all throughout them. It, they wouldn't be the exception. That would be the rule. There's nowhere on this earth that you're going to go aside from a sand dune where you're not going to have growth in these roots that are going, you know, 10, 20, 30 feet down in the ground, dying, getting filled in with the upper layer. I, right? I, I understand what you're saying, Sam. That I, look, that I feel as though we're starting to I feel as though we're starting to go in circles. Um, I'd love to have this conversation with you later uh, as well. Right. I'm sure we'll be meeting again. Right. But yeah, yeah. it really sounds like we're going in circles here because I'm just going to bring up a lake receding again as my argument. Right. So, so lake um, and the shall we shake and hands and agree to disagree for now? Because I don't want to continue going in a circle. Sure. Give me like one more minute. Is that fair enough? And then yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm just saying, I, I, you know, I mean, I don't, last night, I don't know how long uh, Richard and um, – Whoever he was talking to went for, but like I quit I because of <laughs> the story, right? So I don't uh, want to have that happen again. Even started. Yeah. So uh, let, let me just let me just address that because I feel like I didn't address that really quick, and then um, and then that that's it. I guess we'll be good because I agree, and I and thank you. I I do enjoy the the, the talk. So and um, okay, so as that lake recedes, immediately you're. Then you achieve that layer that you wanted, that boundary. But as that lake recedes, what's going to chase that lake? The plants are. The, the life is. And those plants are going to immediately root and start disturbing that nice new layer, that fine boundary. The animals are going to be digging. They're going to be chasing that water. You're going to have the most growth. The hardest spot for those layers to form is going to be next to a body of water, especially if it's receding. And that's observable. So I, I understand your theory doesn't allow that, but I mean, we, we can see that. <laughs> I mean, t show me, show me where on earth that's wrong. Show me where you're not going to have plants chasing the water. Again, I'll agree with you. It, it kind of sounds like a straw man, but let's table this for another time. All right. <laughs> go, go enough. Enough. <laughs> if I could go to bed soon anyways. So yeah, me too. I'm getting in trouble. Cause it's I know, I know Red Fang and Liz have been trying to pop in <laughs> stuff. So, All right. Who's next? I'm just kidding. <laughs> hey, 
stuff. Uh, Sam, you know your stuff about the flood and geology. Um, oh, I'm, I'm glad you're still awake, guys. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> kind of that was one long stream earlier. But it's still necessary. I mean, it's still important, though, because uh, it's an. Oh, it's a, it's a big rock. It's part of the bedrock of the Christian faith as Noah's flood. Oh, and, you know, but even even Jesus uses he, he references the Noah's flood as well. So looking for a Yeah, Iron's talking crap behind the freaking keyboard. Come on in, Iron. I know. I'm asking him to. I'm asking him to come in. He doesn't want to come in. <clears throat> Yeah, come on in, Iron. Let's have a talk, buddy. Let's have a talk about those, <laughs> those secular websites he goes to and tries to say that the Bible could, endorses all this crap. So you come in and tell it. me how wrong I am. That's okay. <laughs> well, he also, history proves you wrong, so. How's that? Your your time date that you gave My time proves date? you wrong. Yeah. How's that? Oh, well, if we're if we're going back to the twenty fifth century of BCE, your your uh, history doesn't work out for you. What? Just Explain. don't read the Septuagint. Because yeah. because the Great Pyramids were already built. <laughs> Just don't read the Septuagint. So you know that there's some controversy over the timelines that they have at the here, right? Because some of those pharaohs were overlapping. Well, that still doesn't change history on dating. No, that literally things. changes your history. <laughs> not around the world, bro. Because then they're not consecutive, right? They're congruent. So that shortens Just that timeline. Babylon, Do you understand Babylon. what those words mean? Uh, I'm, right? ta I'm talking about the pyramids, not the pharaohs. Okay, so, 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 um, our first common ancestor was two hundred thousand years ago, and we've got no records of any of this stuff until about ten thousand years ago, and then magically, all of a sudden, we have languages and farming and civilizations, and so I'm off by, I'm off by what, like four thousand years. And you think you got me, but you're off by what? Just under two hundred thousand. So Sam, <laughs> I, I think uh, I'll just I think I'll just stick with my my side. I think yeah, I'm I got. Make sense. Um, I, I I hate to jump in again, but uh, um, I had that ex this exact conversation with Nephilim Free a while ago. Um, I don't oh, see boy. the strength of the argument that why didn't humans develop writing faster? I don't see how that's a good argument. Right, you, you said so, you know, so. Well, okay, maybe, maybe alone, but but it's like a whole, you know. Uh, well, we didn't we didn't start making clay pots until eight thousand years ago. Hey, hey, hey! Hmm. Mind, art is still a language. So, but we but we are still. I don't, I don't, we, we still it. have things that were getting built ten thousand BCE. Hey, Red Fang. <laughs> When you go out, if you do, you ever watch uh, like survivor type shows? Right. Okay. So, what's the what are the three primary things that a somebody does to survive? What's the first thing they try to find? There's two main ones: shelter and food. Oh, okay. Shelter. So, do they immediately build a house? Or did they oh, find if, if, they, if, they, if they're nomadic, no, they, they move to place to place. Okay. What about when they settle? When they finally settled? When, yeah. when cities were actually getting towns and stuff were getting built? No, Red Fang, like, what, what do you think? There was like two, two people walking around for 200,000 years? No, there, there was a lot more than what you're thinking so oh, you're, i don't know they're yeah okay let's go with that for a second right so let's look at the population growth map of the world and so you see a line and that line goes back you can you can put it wherever you want six ten thousand it doesn't matter where do you want it you want it at 10 you want it at 12 is that going to falsify me so at we'll go back twelve thousand years are you happy with that does that work for you yeah, that works. Okay, so let's go back 12,000 years. So that line is going to be pretty much, if you're looking at a graph at like a zero, 
Okay. And then from 12,000 years to today, I wouldn't, go, I wouldn't say it was zero. Well, at some point, you're going to have a zero, right? Yeah, but you're going to have to go a little lot farther back to get to zero. Okay. Let me, let me just run with this line of logic and, and then I'll give you all the time you need to refute it. So we'll give you that 12,000 years. So from 12,000 years ago, you're going to have X, whatever that number is, to today. Now, what's the population of the earth today? Uh, we're heading to what? Eight billion people. Eight billion. So how many years? Close to that number. So in 12,000 years, you can go from a small population to eight billion. Now, you want me to believe that the first human was 200,000 years ago and they never grew in population. And then just magically, magically in the last 12,000 years, so you say, we go from a small population to eight billion. And you think that's logical? It's actually 400,000. No, it's, 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 wow. it's actually based on the empirical data, right? It's actually about 6,000 years ago. No, I'm saying the, the model that evolution is safe for the, the, the humans now is moved, has been moved to 400,000. It's even worse. So, so yeah, can, you want, can you mute yourself? Because I don't want to, I don't want to give Red Fang an unfair argument. We'll give him the best scenarios. Okay, yeah. we'll, we'll give we'll give Red Fang 12, 12,000 years to explain why in the last twelve thousand years everything went from all of the languages and all of the civilizations and all of the cities and all of this migration around the world. You, you can, in twelve thousand years we go from X all the way up to eight billion. Now, you have to explain to me, Red Fang, why this process took 200,000 years, between two and 400,000 years to happen. What were they doing in all of that 200,000 years? What were they doing? Uh, I don't know off the top of my head. They were probably nomads just moving you don't know? moving so with the herds. So then you have so a faith. I, 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 don't, I, I don't know exactly what they're doing because I haven't looked it up. I, I just looked up what was going on during your supposed flood story happening. Mm. Okay. So do you know that there's a bottleneck in your theory too, right? Not really, dude. Cause I, I'm because I haven't know. looked it up. Doesn't mean I, I don't know. So I can wait, easily Red, look it up. Are you telling me that you believe what you believe on faith? No. Like blind faith? Because you don't even know. No, your own I, no, I, no because I haven't even looked at what it is. So you don't know what you believe, but yet you believe it anyway. And so you're accusing me of taking something on faith when you have a blind faith because you don't even. I don't have. I don't have any faith toward anything. I have to look. I have to do the research on it first. But you have faith there wasn't a flood, right? I have faith there was no global flood. Yes. Because there's no sign of a global flood all over the world, in spite of everything that. Except for Japan, that that uh, puts a giant dink into that. There was no no. What is there? Can somebody look up? I think there's like 140 nations on this globe. Is there something? Is that about right? Something like that. But you got well, one. I did, you didn't answer my question earlier. Did you believe that we were one continent at one point? Um, I believe that the. So my answer, immediate answer is I don't know, but I believe that the, in the creation model, there's some variation, but yes, they were, everything was ultimately a type of Pangea, uh, Pangea type scenario. Yeah. And then, then over time that we slowly separated. No, not slowly. It happened fast. It right. happened fast. Yes. Yeah. My daughter was slow. Let me, let me let me ask you. Let me ask you something. Okay. Let's say I let's say you have a giant waterbed, Red Fang, and you and a bunch of your friends are are on it. Okay. You can say they're all girls because I know that that would bother you if they were guys. Doesn't matter. Not relevant. <laughs> <laughs> Since you're just making stuff up anyway. So uh, I, 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 if, if there are guys on the bed, girls on the bed, 
Actually, I'll, no, okay, I'm going to go somewhere totally different, something that, that we can, again, observe. Okay, so let's say you've seen these videos where these guys have these giant pools, above ground pools in their backyard, and they'll, they'll pop it. And what happens to all of those things that are floating on top of the pool? Do they all end up in the same spot? Kind of, but they all kind of scatter around, right? So if you have this Pangea-type continent and you have these uh, a, a large body of water that they're sitting on, the fountains of the deep burst forth, right? That, that if that if, because we don't know, we weren't there. But if these large land masses were on these giant aquifers, and if those aquifers were slowly being depleted, then that would cause some sort of shifting, and these land masses could separate very fast. Is that unreasonable to believe? Yes. Okay. So then I'll have a to, question. To, to end up where, where they're at now, yes. I have a question for you. That, that is a, that's maybe, a lot of power. Maybe Jordan would like to chime in on this one also. So I have a link to a article from Nature. <clears throat> Let me try to find this. Oh, I'm, pre I'm pretty sure Ogre would know a lot better how much force that would cause. For Red Fang, you have to you have to explain these things to me. Or else you are the one with a blind faith position. Not really, bro. <laughs> just because what I haven't done the research behind it, it doesn't mean I have a blind faith behind it. So then you're I'm just. Throw I'm, your I'm willing to actually do the research to look you, up. You what haven't done happened. any research. I'm, I'm like you. You 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 haven't done any into the Bible. <laughs> hey, Red Fang. One of us has done research. Okay. So let me ask you. Okay. So here I have this link. So, Red Fang, let me ask you, if if there are these giant rocks in soil, right? Let's say, let's say I go into my backyard again, and I stack up a bunch of rocks in soil. I mix it all together, rocks and dirt, all this crap. <clears throat> and then I turn my sprinklers on it for like 10 years. And I, and I don't even look back there. When I come out of my uh, house and I go in my backyard 10 years later, what am I going to find in my backyard? You tell me. A, giant, a giant mud pit? No, <laughs> probably not. I, I'm think. Well, maybe. I guess it depends. I, I would say that most of that most of that dirt would wash away, and I would be left with a lot of rocks in my backyard. So well, it, also, it, it would depend on the angle of your ha uh, your yard and the flow sure. of the Fair water. Enough. So let me ask you this: How come every mountain on this globe? is not just all rocks. Why is there still dirt? Why are they still falling? Why are they still mudsliding? How come I can go up to like, you know, the Sierras and I can sit in these big dirt camping grounds? How come it's just not all washed out? Now I want you to answer that. Uh, but, the but, Sierra desert? Because it's a desert, there's no water. No, the, the Sierras, dude. They're like the beautiful mountains, like the Yosemite. The Rocky Mountains, you mean? The High Sierras. Yeah. Yeah. What, what, what about all of them? So if you have erosion taking place for millions and millions of years, that erosion happens fast, and we can measure that rate. And I'm sorry, these slow, these slow forming well, mountains. Erosion, are forming fast. erosion doesn't happen fast. Okay. So let me let me talk on it. Let me try to find. Okay. So I'm going to post this link in the chat and you can look at that and then you can explain, then you can answer my question again. So there's an article from Nature and what this suggests is that there was a, a little bit of a rainstorm in your model. It was, it was about one to 200 million years of rain. Straight. What would that do? I mean, if you One or two minutes. Yeah. Uh -huh. Just a little rainstorm. For, for <laughs> one to two million no, years? I, 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 no, I, I made a joke right here. Mine. Have you seen Britain? Um. <laughs> so, Red Fang, I'm still waiting for an answer. I just want to know, like, what were these people uh, that you You would probably get crevices. Getting, getting cut into the rock from the water for 200 for 200 
between two and 400,000 years, you had these people that were just walking around, not building a civilization, not doing anything, not leaving any records. Is that reasonable to believe? But that the, 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 they weren't leaving written records of what they're doing, but we have, we have wind uh, stone tools and stuff. Red Fang, if there's 8 billion people on the earth today and we've only been here for, well, a, I would say between 6,000 years or less if we account for the flood, right? But, but, we'll, but we, we'll have, we have evidence of tools and stuff going past that. How, how much has man built in the last 6,000 years? We should actually even quite, regard quite to having a, bit. a Okay. So, to have in a written language, um, what's it called? so you have 200,000 years and you don't have a population to show for it. And but, if you but did, we also have, it would we also have buildings and stuff past yeah. 6,000 years. Red Fang, if you can reach 8 billion people in 6,000 years, do you not see how you have a problem? And if you want to say that you found a stick or a pot, I would ask you, how come they're not everywhere? You shouldn't be able to stick a shovel in the ground without finding them. Come on. Well, actually, I was going to, actually, I'm trying to say in regards to the whole language thing, just because we don't find any, like, what's it called, stone slabs or tablets with anything written on them, or even, like I was referring to earlier, bones and tortoise shells, doesn't mean that there wasn't one at this time period in existence. Uh, I think Let's if I'm correct, that would that. be an argument from silence. Let's think about that for a second. Let me ask you a question. Do you think a stone slab with words carved into it what's going to last longer a stone slab with words or a paper scroll what's going to last but we do find stone slabs with carving in them that go past your how uh date. how many how many based on carbon dating yes based on carbon dating oh i know you're not you're, you're going to deny carbon dating no, no, no. We'll allow it because if you allow the carbon dating, then you can say that the earth is not more than a million years old. Yeah, you can. If we find carbon-14 in diamonds and the half-life of carbon-14 is 5,700 years, I think. Yeah, but we have different car different ways to date <laughs> than just that. Oh uh, you can use your carbon and we'll take that 12,000. We'll, we'll, we'll make that 6 go all the way to 12, okay? So now that we've allowed carbon dating... We find it in diamonds, and you have a bigger problem because now you can have your 12,000 years, but unfortunately, the Earth is less than a million years old. All right. I got to step in here again Why if you don't we mind. Bring in the Go for it, champ. <laughs> right. All right. All right. Let, me, let, me steal um, man. let me steal man you. We find cracks in diamonds, uh, and it might have been contaminated. <laughs> so I did a little bit of looking into I, I read a couple of the papers and the articles on the uh, – less than carb and the uh, greater than carbon dating stuff. And first of all, my, my first big problem with it is they didn't uh, necessarily try to argue against contamination. They simply said it didn't happen. So why? if you, why didn't they do that? Probably because why, why, the why, did they, why did they not argue against contamination? Well, because an ex, there's a couple different reasons why you would find carbon 14 in the diamonds. The first one could possibly be contamination. Uh, uh, and they didn't say, uh, they, they didn't address the possibility of con contamination. Why? And I think that's funny why? because some of the papers they cite were explicitly about finding contamination, weird items and something to look out for. So they sure. know contamination can in, be involved in some of these things. Yet they didn't use that as a synopsis. Can to I, can I can the amount I of carbon? Hold on, let me address that, please. Sure. Okay, one at a time. Okay, so by your own admission, they did not address contamination. So I will ask you why. So let me ask you this. If I have a piece of aluminum and a, a sponge, and I pour Coke on both of them, a soda on both of those, which one of those is going to get contaminated and which one is not? What? Are you trying yeah. to say diamonds can't be contaminated? Uh, yeah, that's what I'm 
That's why they didn't bring up contamination. Because well, what's harder than a diamond? Specifically, what's harder than a diamond? said that they knew it can be contaminated, but they didn't address it at all because they didn't really yeah, di- di- care di- about it. <laughs> diamonds can have radioactive contamination. Diamonds can be interjected with other various things all the time. Most uh, hardness scale refers to cutting, does not refer to breaking. You can break a diamond. It's not how, difficult how does, to do. How do you make something harder? You know, it has nothing to do with hardness. Hardness is a physical trait, not it a trait of density. contamination through uh, X, Y, Z, various means. Does it not True. have to do with density? I mean, I no, mean, it, do it, have dense things stuff. can have contamination from various means all the same. Uh, one, of the, one of the big arguments creatures make a lot is about ringwoodite, which is contamination that they found in a diamond. And that's a creationist argument. So, so here's something, and Here's something that I have looked into a little bit, okay? They have said that in order for those anything to be contaminated, like leaching through the environment, they would have had to have measured the environment of which it was leaking from, right? And the amount of contamination would have had to have been exceedingly high in order for it to contaminate the diamond. And that's why they probably didn't address it. So the other, the part two... It's Part not two possible. of the thing is the amount of carbon-14 they actually found by percentage is equivalent to known examples of contamination via other sources. So that's sure. why that entire argument is uh, questionable to me because they use as evidence what everyone else uses as contamination. But for some reason, theirs is a contamination. By the way, um, or um, could I get some links to those okay. sources so I can look into later? Yeah, I'll I'll link it. To, their their paper cites secular papers that talk about this stuff as a contamination issue. Ah. They get the same numbers, but don't. So I'll, I'll find your paper real quick. Yeah. Okay. So that to me is an int- is a uh, that to me rings as a pro- as problematic, right? And okay. and uh, th- yeah. So that that was so, my. So are the, are the people that are are the people that I'm getting these arguments from, right? <clears throat> have they not thought of this and have they not addressed it? Well, so I, I, so first of all, to have they not addressed it, I, I haven't found any evidence of them addressing it because newer articles I've seen link back to this as evidence. So, and then have they not thought of it? They obviously thought, of, they did think of it, but they didn't think it was reasonable because they sort of hand waved it away by saying there is no contamination because stuff's super clean. They say that in the paper, not word for word. Basically, if you yeah, want to ask, I, 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 I would push back on that, but I don't know enough to give you an adequate response. Although yeah. I would suggest that somebody has brought this up, and it oh, hundred percent. Yeah, I don't believe that this hasn't been addressed. I don't believe that it's a, a big problem like you're saying, suggesting that it is. I don't believe that for a second. Oh, I, because because I, I've heard this, I've heard this brought up in debates with people that have a higher education than us, and that's yeah. not the point that they've made. So I don't know, I don't understand why you're making well, it, and I'm not going to worry about it. So, <laughs> well, again, this is this is all part of that the the cycle that we keep having, right? Um, sure. Obviously, the. Your arguments against my worldview don't budge me, and my arguments against your worldview don't budge you. However, that doesn't mean either of us is necessarily true. So, or let me ask you, what is the half-life of carbon-14? 5,700-something, I think. So if you had a massive piece of carbon-14, how long would it last? Well, that's they've, they've not done. how that... That's not you don't have a massive piece of carbon fourteen, but um, if you if you have a amount of carbon fourteen in an, let's say a plant dies, it has some carbon fourteen, uh, five thousand some odd years later, half of that carbon fourteen would be I think carbon twelve. Okay, so are diamonds big, or are they small? Well, diamonds are small. Are they found deep down in the earth sometimes? Yeah, Usually, yeah. Okay. So how do you get a little tiny piece of, I mean, how, how big of the carbon, how big of a piece of carbon could it have started off in the diamond? I mean, if you only, if your diamond is, is small, 
then you can't get a piece of carbon in the diamond that's bigger than the diamond. I, I think so you're confused about how this works. When they measure – in the paper I just linked in the private chat, when they measure uh, carbon-14, it's a percentage weight. They're not actually measuring like poundage of carbon-14. It's a percentage of that particular isotope in the um, yeah. chemical makeup of what they're measuring. Right. It's uh, yeah. like spectrometry stuff. Okay. So, yeah. so again, I mean, I'm sure this has been addressed, but again, the fact that you find it in there and it's a diamond isn't something that can really be Gavin, mute yourself easily. No. Um, yeah, I can't hear over Gavin's private. Right, praise, praise, get, mute Gavin. I did. I thought he's muted. <laughs> Come on. I don't think Gavin's driver wants his information out. <laughs> did Gavin get arrested? Is that what we're watching here? <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, but anyway, uh, Red Fang. Yeah, repeat that last one, please. I did bring up a good point, uh, Red Fang, that I'd like for you to address. Uh, the the, the world, world population and 10,000 BCE was 10 million. Okay. You, so you're saying 10 million BCE. So you want to do the math really quick? No, no, 10,000 10, BCE. Okay. So how there do you 10, have... The world population was 10 million. What? According to who? <laughs> I, I, posted, I posted a video for you to watch later. That's wonderful. So how, how do you have 200,000 years of people? So, so you're telling me it took 200,000 years? We, 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 we were nomads. We were nomads at the time. So it took 200,000 years to get to that first 10 million. Yeah. And then all of a sudden in 10,000 years or 12,000 years. After the last ice age, yeah. Mm-hmm. And you and you think that's reasonable to believe that it took that long to gain in population? Even well, when, you're, when, observed, when you're when you're just hunters and gatherers, yeah. So you realize that food, food was very sparse. Uh, Red Fang, you realize that we are are comparing observable evidence to a theory. No, I mean, it's not a theory. It's it's observable as evidence. We have evidence of. Of people being nomads, people living well, in caves, and we have the cave paintings. And <clears throat> who observed these people back then? We 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 find we find their tools and stuff. But who observed? Who finds their tools? We do. Archaeologists. Who did they ask how old they are? We we did studies on them. Okay, so no one observed it though. Well, no, no one has a time machine that I know of. So it wasn't observed then. We, we have their tools. We have their cave paintings. We have... Well, I'm asking you a, just a pointed question. Did we yeah, observe them giving, or not? No, we, we don't have a time machine, so we can't observe them. So it's not it's like, Okay, okay. So what but, about... <laughs> Go ahead. Just, just like, just like your global flood, you don't have evidence of a global there flood because go. nobody was there to witness the global flood. Sure. <clears throat> but there are written accounts of a global flood, are they not? Yeah, that's that's what I was going to yeah, say. Yeah, written, written accounts of a flood, not not a global flood. Hey, red thing. Yeah, so. what do you do, Galaxy Brain? The word <laughs> no, global is don't. purely subjective. The word global is purely it, it, subjective. It, it, we're, we're talking about okay. ancient stories that have been passed galaxy down. Brain, galaxy brain, galaxy brain, you have to lift your IQ off the floor. Yeah, the word, global, the the floor, the word global is purely go subjective. Go driver purely and listen subjective. to what he's talking about. <clears throat> uh, red thing. Okay, so was it observable or not? We we have we we don't we don't have we anybody have that has a time machine to see exactly what happened. So we true. we have the stay we have the test that we ran to see how sure. old the tools and everything that, was that are disputed, right? Uh, only by you Christians, yes. So they are disputed, right? 
Not by me, people. So they are disputed, right? By at least me. Okay, by you. <laughs> okay. That that you're 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 not a scientist. You don't study oh. the field. Oh, oh, hold on! Don't go down that road. Hey. Oh, I'm going to go down that road because okay. you're you're okay. assuming what that are, I. What are your credentials, Mr. Scientist? I don't have the credentials. Oh, so if no. I don't have the credentials, <laughs> I'm not isn't, to isn't that abundantly clear? Is that a, let, let, it, it, yes, it's not abundantly clear that, that Red Fang has no credentials and no intelligence? So Red Fang is that not abundantly I'm clear? I'm trying to add to this conversation. Red Fang. No, you're not. You're but dodging. You're dodging I'm not Red Fang. If just, I just because you guys deny the science behind of what we have found, do you believe the science, Red Fang? Do you believe the science? Red Fang. If I we, we've been talking about the science this whole night. If I if I Do you believe the science? If I can't speak on it because I'm not a scientist, then that also means are you ready for this? That you can't either. But when I'm bringing up science Hold on, uh, uh, you're not a scientist. Okay, then, then why are we even having this discussion? You, you well, don't I'm have not, scientific I, I, proof of, of global flood, and hold on, hold or, on. Or, or the Earth sure. being only six thousand years old. I'm just, I'm just, I'm just trying to make a point with you that when you say that I don't have an opinion, my opinion's not valid because I'm not a scientist. Or you're, you, you're making you it sound like my opinion doesn't yourself. matter either because I'm bringing up. And then you still. also disqualify yourself by default. That's what I'm trying yeah, to say. Yeah, but I've been bringing up evidence all night you, in the private chat. What? Oh, my gosh. No, I don't think so, Rick Fang. I, I do think so because I have been bringing up evidence in the private chat this entire oh, night. I think, I, I think you cling to science on faith, Rick Fang. Blind faith. Red Fang. Hey, uh, can I pop in real quick, please? Red Fang, you, you post over. things to South Park. That's not evidence. Uh, so yeah, I, I just want to no, say I, I just posted an easy video I, for you. I just uh, I was hey uh, just real quick guys. I was uh, gonna head over to LPP's channel and go to bed. So I just want to say good night to everyone. Okay. All right, uh, yeah, good talk to I'm glad I convinced you all that I was right because I have a superior <laughs> worldview. So you were a thousand percent right, Aga. A thousand percent. Yeah. Or I got to tell you that I, I did enjoy our conversation. No, glad glad to hear it, man. All Thank right. You. Take care. All right.